So we're going to start this uh, second part of the topic two, and uh, I'm very happy to welcome Professor Wang from Hong Kong, who's going to share the second part uh, of the conference. So for myself, it's been a real pleasure chairing the first part, uh, a real pleasure um, listening to you all. I will keep on listening, but I will give the lead uh, to Professor Wang. And just before we start with uh, Dr. Grabner, uh, just a remark uh, for uh, a better, um, from a better, from a technical point, sorry, it is better if we turn down our camera uh, during the presentation. So uh, um, if you could please do that, that would be uh, lovely. And then open it only when you, when you, when you talk, when you speak, when you talk. So thank you very much again for having me. That was lovely. Um, and I'll be listening um, to the end of this uh, topic number two and uh, probably also this afternoon. Thank you, Charlotte, for all the technical assistance and uh, uh, lovely chats and everything. Uh, it was perfect. But thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of the presentation. And I leave uh, the floor to Professor Wong and to Dr. Grabner. Thank you, Marie Frans. Um, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Uh, the next presentation will be by uh, Dr. Michael Grabner from University of Natural Resources and Life Science, Vienna. The topic will be reconstruction of historical water mill during the Worldwood Day 2019. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for the introduction. Yes, right. I'm I'm happy to to give a yeah a World Bute Grant report finally. Um, all of you attended two years ago in in the Austrian World Bute event were able to to see the beginning of this very nice project of the reconstruction of the of the mill, so mainly the building. So I want to start a little bit with, um, let's say, the historical background on this, on this very special type of, of a mill, which we can find in, in Austria or somewhere else. So what, what's different on this, on this special type, on the so-called so North Mill? Um, the axis, the axle is, is vertical, not horizontal, like, like uh, most of yours, maybe in your mind, something like this, this is an example from Stübing too, from, from Styria. So we are not talking about this. But what's the difference here is, yeah, it's vertical and it, uh, you have a direct link from the wheel to the, to the stone, to the, to the grinding stone. That's the difference, which makes it the, the more easy system. So we try to, to figure out a little bit about the history of this of this kind of, of, of milling machine. Uh, of course, everything started something like you can see here grinding uh, grain, what kind of um, between two stones, maybe you can turn it or you do it just by hand. Um, so something like 100 before Christ, it looks like that uh, th this type of Norse mill started somewhere in Asia Minor. It was described a little bit later in Greece. And, and later on, um, it looks like that uh, there was separated in different types in a Greek type and a Nordic type, which you can find in Scandinavia. And you still can find some examples, historical examples in Scandinavia. So I've seen in Northern Sweden. Uh, one, one guy mentioned that uh, also a little bit before Christ, uh, about the birth of Christ, um, it was described also in China. And it looks like that later on in our medieval times, that's the, let's say 1000 years ago, so that's the European time counting, um, it was distributed all over the globe except Australia and Oceania. So I don't know if this is right, but uh, this was given by, by some authors. To give you an idea about the importance in, in Austria in 1550, so it's uh, less than 500 years ago, um, we had in a just in a, just in a valley, 
Gast, the so-called Gastein Valley, that's uh, a little bit west of the city of Salzburg. We had there 116 of these mills working, 116, just in a single valley, which is not that big. Nowadays, we have less than 20, which are still existing. Some of them are possible to run, but not all of them. And so the idea was to reconstruct uh, such, such a mill, the building, but also the machinery itself. So we went to a small village, it's called some Großglockner in the southwestern part of, of Austria. At this, um, at this place, there were seven mills uh, still standing. There were. Before, um, one was completely demolished by, by the flooding. And th this is also, we, you can see here on the, on the mill, you can see that it was repaired often. So flooding appeared quite, quite frequently and uh, also in former times and destroyed partially the, the buildings itself. So we did some technological dating and it was between the 7th and 19th century. So it was a mixture. So we went there to have a look on this, to have a detailed look on this, uh, how it was set up. Uh, we did some measurements on the dimensions and stuff like this. We, we tried to figure out how, how all the mechanisms are, are working. Uh, you see, we were together with the, with the whole team. You can see here, Mike, uh, having a look on this. And this Klaus is one of the major guys from the museum and, and Erwin, uh, he was the master on the, on the reproduction. The owner, he was the owner. We were there in, in May, as I told you, 2018. Uh, several months later, he passed away, unfortunately. So we don't know what's going on with the mill anymore. So we had the, the chance to get uh, very nice measurements uh, on a 3D model. So this is what, what we used also for the for the reconstruction to get uh, impressions on the on the measurements and, and stuff like this. So this is still the uh, still the, the the mill which is existing in in Kals. And then a little bit later in in the autumn uh, we started on some preparations. So in October we started with the basement more or less uh, was finished before winter. This was was really the goal. And then December, we started a little bit with the waterway. And in November, uh, all the logs arrived, which we used for set up the, the mill. And in January, end of January, um, Erwin and the team from the museum started a little bit on preparation. So what you can see here, the, the picture uh, from, from the 28th of February, so a few days before we started the, the World Road Day event, because we started earlier to, to, to do this, to finish this, uh, you see this was the, the, the status at this time. So about half of the building was done up, up to this point. And, and then a few days later, uh, we had a very nice possibility and very good chance uh, to invite some international handicrafts, uh, Pierre, Mark, Joe, Ola, Andy, Jacques, Ellie, and the team of young um, carpenters also helped us on, on finishing it. And what I'm going to show you now is uh, it's a kind of teaser of the of a, of a film of a video which we we started. Oh, sorry. So this is once again the the original mill during the measurements getting some impressions of the original. This is Stübing, it's the open air museum where the World War Day 2019 took place. Once again, the beginning, the basement. A lot of discussions on how to set up it Yeah, do you see, we really used the traditional techniques. Products to finish the, the timber we need. 
This is Erwin again. So we're just to give you some examples what you can see on the video and the documentation. Some persons from the museum here. We have, uh, it's a block building in principle, a log block building. Just except here, what you see here, this is close to the door with the groove. This is about finding the right place of the axle. That's the waterway, so, or will be the waterway at the end. Here you can see Pierre and Ola from the international team. So they already arrived here at this time. You see a lot of people working. Joe is preparing some parts for the waterway. And here Pierre. You see it's growing and growing. This was the help of the of the young um, carpenters, especially finishing the floor. Here is Mark, also part of the inter international team. Tony helped a little bit. Ola. So that's the traditional party when it's when the roof construction is finished. So that's the the usual time when you do this. So we managed also to do the, the roofing. So that means the mounting of the shingles. It's a special type, long. And this was a very special part. Shaq and Andy were able to, to produce the axle, which is quite big. And this was really big fun for all of us. Not easy but they really managed it to do it um, very, very well and very precise. So you see at the end, so we can start producing the wheel, which is inserted directly in the axle, like you can see here. the last step, inserting the iron ring here. That's inserting the, the stone to the axle. So this was um, more or less what you have seen or the people attending at the World Good Day uh, two, two years ago. Um, and then afterwards, during the summertime, we were able, together with the staff from, from the museum, to finish the machinery. So what, they, what you have seen here is yeah, the, the outermost part of the stone. You see the box. 
and the machine, let's say the machine itself, because you need a lot of, of movement of vibrations for the milling, also the door appeared. So that means water will come. This was possible to do during the World War Day at the end on Saturday, on Friday and Saturday. Here this filming was done end of September. Everything was finished. It's the, the big celebration day of the museum, usually end of September. And we were able to run it. We were able to grind uh, the grain. So that's really the original sound, how it sounds when it's running. Now you can see all the special special parts which had to be reproduced. And the different products. So this is something which goes back to the mill again. And a very nice view from the wheel when it's running. So this is um, just a teaser and, and a thank you for the cooperation we had with the World Wood Day Foundation with the International Wood Culture Society and, uh, and the museum. Um, we really loved it to, to run this project during the World Wood Day. Um, so we really hope that World Wood Day will come back to, um, on a face-to-face uh, event like like we had two years ago to have the possibility to run something like this again. Um, this was just a teaser as I, I mentioned. If you want to have some more time, it's about two hours and 20 minutes, you can find the whole documentation on this on this process. So in principle you can see all necessary steps um, to set up the mill. Yeah it will take two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, you can find it here on the on the YouTube on our YouTube channel, uh, and you can find there also the English subtitles. So you can have a look on this, not not only with the with the spoken German words, uh, but you can read the subtitles too. Yeah, that's it. Many thanks for for your attention, and I really hope uh, to have the possibility to do something like this uh, again in 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 future, or hopefully in near future. Many thanks. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, let's see if we have any question or uh, maybe I would have a question or would you like to talk about what do you think the most challenging part for this process of reconstruction of this mill? The most challenging, it, everything was challenging finally, uh, it was quite sure that it was the first time to set up a mill uh, or this kind of mill uh, for the last at least 100 years. So there was no really no, no experience on this. Of course, it's no problem to set up the building, but uh, the machinery itself. So the turning of the of the axle was quite complicated and setting up the machinery to understand really the details. Um, this was maybe the most challenging parts here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, then if uh, no further ado, thanks. Thank you for sharing this experience with us.